All right, so this is going to be a nice panel right here, combining the universe and the metaverse, physical and digital experiences. We have Matthew Shapiro. We have Eric Witchen. Is that correct? Yep. Right on. Jalik Jubanputra. Yeah, and my boy, William Quigley. What is up? He had the easiest name to say. Give it up for your panel. Testing, testing. Hello, everybody. So my name is Eric Witchen, and I'm going to be both moderating and speaking here. However that will work, we will see. I'm thinking maybe I use a different voice for my speaker and my moderator, but we'll see. Um, so I started out as a five-year-old boy, as a big baseball card collector. Um, you know, that, that migrated into a little bit later in my life um, into wine, watches, whiskey. Um, and now uh, I am the anonymous crypto punk um, Defiance Works on Twitter. So I come to you mainly today as a collector. In my professional life, I run New Street, uh, N-E-U-S-T-R-E-E-T dot -E -E um, We're sort of in stealth right now, but we're essentially building critical data infrastructure for the collectibles markets, both physical and digital. Um, and uh, the reflection of that is going to be a platform that as a collector you can go to and essentially see across marketplaces, um, both in the physical world and the digital world, where you can buy these things, because every day a marketplace pops up, I don't have the bandwidth for that, uh, that's the problems we're solving for. Um, so I'll pass the introductions on to the rest of the panelists, and then we'll kick things off with some uh, questions. So, Jalak. Hi, uh, I'm Jalak Jevin Putra. I am so excited to be on stage at the Town Hall, where I've seen lots of great concerts. Um, and I run Future Perfect Ventures. It's a fund I launched in 2014 to invest in decentralized technology. Um, I believe that the 21st century was going to give rise to more um, uh, the reduction of intermediaries. And, and so we're investing out of our third fund. And I think this is the most kind of exciting time since I've been in, in the crypto, web 3.0, whatever you want to call it, world, because I think we're finally seeing the, uh, we're going to see the mass adoption of, of this technology, and we won't always know we're interacting with it, but uh, just like Bitcoin and, and um, DeFi has empowered individuals to, um, to kind of take control of their financial future, um, uh, we're seeing NFTs uh, take hold and reduce the need for intermediaries so creators can uh, connect directly with their collectors and build community. And, and so um, it's great to be here. Awesome. We're good here. Hey, guys. Uh, my name is Matt Shapiro. I'm the founder of Omnot Art. Uh, we're a metaverse uh, NFT gallery that went physical. So we have a location in Chicago, opened in June. Got my team up there. Really pumped about that. And this topic, yeah, thank you. Uh, this topic couldn't be couldn't be better, I think, for I'm not art and what we're doing in terms of combining the universe and the metaverse. And you know that's what we're doing with our gallery. We're the first you know fully physical digital NFT gallery where our events take place in Chicago, but then also happen in crypto voxels and across the metaverse. And so, I think there's a lot of people that talk about the metaverse. There's some companies that are changing their names in really silly directions because of it. Uh, and I think what we're doing is actually developing the metaverse, which I think is what, what really is the next stage of it. There's a lot of speculators from land, a lot of people talking about it as the future, and I think at I'm Not Art, we're just doing experiments every week. We're combining the physical and digital, and so I'm really excited to talk on this panel you know, about this topic. Great. Uh, William Quigley, so I've been in the trading of uh, virtual items business for 23 years. Uh, for a lot of you, any, any of you gamers, you know, uh, video game virtual items and now skins. So those all started really to get to be mass market in 1998 with the dawn of uh, Ultima Online, for anyone who's as old as me, uh, an MMOG. And we created a marketplace for buying and selling of those items. And then we added uh, World of Warcraft and ultimately things like CSGO and PUBG and all the other big games. Uh, so, uh, so NFTs are really just a variant of those, and uh, although a very important variant because they add a few dimensions that don't exist in the walled gardens where most of these video game virtual items exist. So that's why I'm interested in NFTs because we began in that many years ago, my partner and I. And as far as the physical and the digital, uh, I think the uh, that's a very powerful uh, ability. In, in 2018, we started to tokenize consumer products 
we created a, an NFT called Viral that stands for virtual plus in real life. So viral NFTs are NFTs that are linked to a real world consumer product. And uh, as you start to think about it, if you trade real world physical products, you'll start to realize the benefit of separating the ownership from the possession of things to make them easier to trade. NFTs allow that in a way that's not possible in any other uh, digital way because authenticity is instantly proven. And that is what makes the ability to tokenize products uh, a core functionality, I think, of NFTs. There are a lot more than just art. Art is fun, but it's not the only thing NFTs do. Yeah, so, so interestingly, like, um, you know, part of the, one of the components of New Street is we're a media company, so I try to be as unbiased as possible, but a really good example to me of, of physical digital um, currently is what Artifact Studios is doing. Um, for those of you that pronounce it wrong, RTFKT, it's actually Artifact. Um, I'm wearing the Fuosha shoes right now, and I literally had a NFT that I purchased that I minted a physical shoe that allows me to then mint another physical shoe at a certain point in time. It turns me into like a, like a storefront or a vendor for Artifact. It's just phenomenal. Um, so we'll start with you, um, William. Um, you've been around the block for a few times here, uh, and you've seen this, this evolve. I mean, what, is, what are some of the key milestones that you've seen in this past year uh, that, that show you that this is here to stay? Um, well, the first thing to remember is that and I, and I do like that question because a lot of times people think because what they're seeing right now is a lot of speculation around art pieces that, that NFTs are a fad. And uh, NFTs are computers. That's all they are. They're Turing complete computers. So I would say if you had a... Somebody said, oh, I, I think my um, Angry Birds game is gonna get dull and boring at some point. That must mean smartphones are fads. I think the same thing about NFTs. Well, you might get bored with your NFT collection, but uh, NFTs are simply uh, transportable computers. Whatever you can do on a computer, you can do on an NFT. So NFTs in the last year have gone way beyond uh, media files, and now they are bearer instruments, they are, uh, uh, gig economy conduits. Uh, they are uh, an ability to tokenize almost anything and trade. So they have become really a, a, a way of, of just, if you look in the in-game economies, they're, they're ways of actually earning a living. Uh, there are people on WAX who are making $50,000 a week just playing games and harvesting assets and trading them on decentralized exchanges, those are all NFTs. Uh, while it seems like everybody on earth is aware of them, almost no one is. You know, the people in this audience are, are like the 0.001% who actually are doing something about it. So in, in the next three or four years, of course, it'll hopefully we, we get a lot bigger mass market, but for now, uh, it's it's still nascent. Yeah, and I think in a way it's like, you know, we've had the internet, we've had computers for 30 some odd, 40 some odd years, and people have been creating on those internet, uh, those computers for a long time. And the fact of the matter is, is that you now have the ability to prove that you can own something. It's a, it's a revolutionary. I mean, that the proof of ownership is, is, is everything here, I think. Um, anybody want to add anything to the big milestones for uh, you've seen around 2021 before we get to what we see going forward? Yeah, yeah, I think we've seen a lot of physical galleries start to open. You know, obviously Bright Moments is doing really amazing things uh, out of Venice now in New York, Crypto New Yorkers. Uh, you've got Super Chief here uh, in New York. And, you know, what we're doing in Chicago is really trying to build a, a community around this space, Web3 space. And um, what we found is that a lot of this NFT kind of boom has happened during COVID. And so this conference is a great example of what happens when all these people in the community come to one place. And so... I think what we're doing in Chicago is really kind of a use case for, you know, a, a type of kind of community that can be all over the country, all over the world. And so really excited to continue to kind of like building in Chicago to show what's possible. But kind of this, the, that to me has been kind of the big milestone is actually seeing the physical connection and now NFTs kind of displayed like in a physical way. So excited to see what the Museum of Crypto Art does and kind of the full future of that. You have Art Blocks opening their house in Marfa. So I think this year was really the beginning of kind of the physical element of that. And 
yeah, excited to be a part of that. And, and from the investor perspective, you, you being the investor on our, on our panel here, I mean, what do you see as the major milestones in 2021 that sort of told you that, you know, this is here to stay, this is not going anywhere? Yeah, I mean, we started investing in this space a, a few years ago, and um, it was around the idea that NFTs are, I mean, it's just like Bitcoin, or it's, 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 it's uh, data, it's computers, and, and the programmability element um, was particularly interesting, where um, you not only had provenance, um, um, but you could also um, uh, create um, kind of different types of use cases around it, different business models around one NFT. Um, and, and that was a concept that, um, that I think started taking hold um, this year. And what I love about you know, uh, crypto and Web 3.0 is, is that it's open source. So you, you put something out there in the world and then creators are the ones, um, developers, creators are, are the people that, that find the new use cases, right? Um, and, and, and so we've seen that happen with, I mean, and, and going back to the physical, so we, we in 2020 with COVID, um, I mean, this happened, and I do a lot of fintech investing, um, and, and you know, we saw it with, with uh, more traditional I mean, crypto um, or, or to tokens um, take off and trading take off, and, and I think people just were at home, online, experimenting. Um, and now we're going to see, you know, the, the the actual physical manifestation, like the board, board eight um, yacht club, the fact that there was a line, yeah, and, and I think this was a pivotal, I mean, you talk about pivotal moments this past year, right? The, the fact that NFTs could serve as community, could serve as, so I, I think NFTs can be anything, <laughs> frankly, um, and, and the fact that people wanted to connect in person, in real life, um, and, and want to continue to do that. Um, and that, that's only one use case, one business model, but, um, and then the play to earn is, is another one, and, and then collecting one, you know, one of one art pieces is another one. So, uh, and then being able to borrow and lend, again, you know, and, and, um, and use it as, as an asset. Um, and, and so all of this started coming to the forefront. But I agree with William that very few people in the world understand what's really going on. And, and it, it, it's, it's um, you know, it always happens slowly and then all at once. And this is going to hit in a bigger way over the next couple of years. Yeah, the community-driven ownership is, is massive. I mean, the community aspect of it is it makes these things that, that maybe shouldn't be as valuable as they are well, probably undervalued. I mean, it's just, it's all about community ownership and, and validation of that, uh, that ownership. And, and then I would say also the new business models that creators are creating. So we, we're an investor in a company called Curio. They just had a Fast Company article yesterday on um, their partnership with building out um, uh, uh, with, with the Wolf Society, um, uh, the creators of Law and & Order. And they're creating a, a murder mystery participation online and NFTs that are going to give out clues and you can trade those NFTs. And so, and, and a year ago, the, I don't think the creators were thinking all of this would be possible. Um, and, and so it's come a long way. Uh, and that's just one example of, of um, traditional, you know, the, you know, IP folks like looking beyond just the provenance and stuff and then thinking about the participation um, and, and, and then the tradability aspect of this. Yeah. No, absolutely. Um, thank you for that. And so uh, just flipping uh, now to like what we see uh, going forward or what's necessary for this market to continue to grow, um, I'll start. Uh, so at New Street, we are um, metaverse based. We actually were the first, I think, US corporation to designate our global headquarters in CryptoVoxels. I bought a little island called Little Series off of Series. It's not Origin City, but you know, it's a nice place. Um, and uh, so one of the things New Street's providing, as I mentioned, is data infrastructure. And what the hell is that? Um, so I worked for Bloomberg for a long time here in New York uh, for thir 13 years, working across various groups. and. You know, one of the things we did is provided data infrastructure for the financial markets, and that actually promotes and fosters liquidity. So, you know, the fact of the matter that I can still arbitrage between OpenSea and Rarible at, at material amounts of money, and, you know, we're just not there yet in terms of uh, transparency. Like, as I mentioned, there's a marketplace pops up almost every single day, but as a collector, you really don't have the bandwidth to view those things. Um, and even more fundamentally than that, I mean, if, if you guys are anybody's financial technologist out there, there's not even a concept of security master or 
price history or things like that that companies can rely on as a central source of truth. Um, so those are the things we're building under the hood. Um, it'll be reflected as a platform that collectors will be able to go to and will be able to interact with and see. You know, if you want to search for Fuocious, for example, I don't want to have to go to known origin and all these thousand different places to, to figure that out. You know, what, we're not just NFTs, we're actually physical as well. We're sneakers and trading cards, both sports and non-sports. So we see collectibles, um, you know, I, I see NFTs personally kind of like e-commerce. It's like, it's not what you do, it's how you do it. So, you know, in a way for me, as a physical item collector now evolving into digital items, it's just kind of part and parcel. So um, I will punt it off to Matthew and uh, ask you the same question. What do you see in the next year is like, critical for this market to continue to grow and thrive. Yeah, I mean, I think physical digital experience, this is the very beginning of it. You know, I think a lot of people probably here in New York, this is kind of their first taste of what something like that can look like. And I think, you know, whether it's minting or pre-sale specifically on site, I think there's just so much potential kind of with that, with that future. And there's just going to be, this community is going to need places where they can kind of congregate and exchange ideas and do this, whether it's a, a conference or a one-off. And I, I think what's important is to have physical locations. Like, where we are in Wicker Park in Chicago, and if anybody's in Chicago, definitely come through. Um, we, yeah, Chicago, what's up? That's what I'm talking about, I like it. Yes, woo, that's, that's, that's good, we, we show up. No, but really, like, we, we wanna have an open front door for people that are all over kind of the range of crypto knowledge. Just as people who walk off the street that see all of our displays up there and they wanna come in. And I, I think that it, we, we're creating kind of this, this ecosystem around Chicago where all of these people who have been uh, what's up, McDonald? I see McDonald in the front row. Holding down Chicago yesterday. Appreciate it, appreciate it. Uh, no, it's just there, there's so much opportunity, I think, with a physical location. And you know, I'm a big fan of Ethereum. And, and, and not to talk bad on anything else, but I'm a big fan and believer in Ethereum. And Ethereum doesn't market itself. Like, you can look, if you're watching a baseball game, if you're doing anything on social media, you're going to get advertised by a lot of L1, other L1s. Ethereum doesn't have, doesn't approach, has never approached it like that, which is why I think it was able to kind of get where it is right now. And so I think, like... You know, if you, if you look at our gallery, we're selling Ethereum NFTs. And, you know, not saying that it's always going to be like that forever, but I think there is a real education process that's really critical to this moment. And I think onboarding people responsibly in the ecosystem is incredibly undervalued right now. And that's what Ammanar wants to do. We want to create educational resources. We had an event last week called WTF for NFTs where people could come in at like 150 people. We were teaching about MetaMask, teaching them how to get started. And so, you know, I think there's such an opportunity in the space right now for education and to build community. And that's my, my key here is you want to build communities. Like there's platforms, there's all these other things that are there. The hardest thing to do is build community. And that's what Ammanar Art is. A lot of people here are, are, are from our community internationally in the metaverse where we started. And now we're trying to combine it, you know, and so excited for the ride and ex hope to see, you know, many of you guys here in the metaverse and in Chicago and beyond. Yeah, I would say as a call to action, definitely, like, if, if you guys go home and you have friends that are still sort of like, uh, you know, suspicious of NFTs or cryptocurrency in general, just help them out. Oftentimes it's just, a, it's just an education thing. It's getting them set up on MetaMask or it's getting them to understand what's actually going on here. So, I mean, that's kind of the way this all works, right? We tell, we each tell one person, they tell one person, so on and so forth. Uh, we just have to do it intelligently. Um, William, would you like to take the question about uh, what, what you're looking forward to in 2022 and beyond um, that could sort of make or break it for this, uh, this, this industry that we're in? Uh, well, 2022 and beyond, depends how beyond. How be uh, <laughs> oh, <I'm, yeah. laughs> 2025-ish, uh, we'll have the dawn of uh, wearable, properly priced uh, augmented reality devices. That is both a very good thing and a very bad thing for those of us in the industry right now. Uh, uh, but the metaverse, or whatever it, Mark Zuckerberg decides to call it, the principal revenue model of the metaverse will be NFTs for sure. And uh, whether those NFTs are imprisoned in a walled garden or whether they are free to trade is the $64,000 question. And so I. I think going out three years, four years, that's sort of something I'm thinking of. And then more near term, uh, NFTs, 2022 we'll start to see what I talked about before, NFTs that have nothing to do with media. That you don't, you don't see the NFTs. They just, they, they are uh, digital objects that perform tasks. Uh, I, you know, there are companies that employ 
25,000 people to collect fees. That's all they do. That's their job. You can collect fees and distribute them to 1,000 people instantly as somebody's feeding money into the cash register uh, with no people with the smart contract. So those companies, something's going to happen. There are tens of thousands of companies that have one job to verify the authenticity of a document. That's like, like NFTs do that in their sleep. So I don't know what those companies are going to do. And this is maybe what you call creative destruction. But this is the subversive nature of NFTs. They are, they are just portable computers that are going to start doing things. In, in gaming, we call these things bots. Uh, but they're, they're generally not turning complete bots. NFTs are. So uh, that's something 2022, 3, 4 is going to be very powerful. We won't talk about it that much because you don't see them. It's just tasks get done and your cost to do them is going to start to be compressed. So that's, that's beyond just the media side. The media side is fun and it's interesting in games, but as I said, it's not the only thing NFTs will ultimately do for us. Yeah, as a, as a technologist, I actually learned about NFTs through a project called Origin Trail that was doing like supply chain logistics, I think they still are, um, around NFTs. So it's very much a technological vehicle that holds media sometimes, but doesn't have to, and there's a lot of other things it can do. Um, what about you, Jalak? Um, uh, what, are you, what are you seeing? Yeah, I, I think, um, I mean, William encapsulated this really well in terms of, you know, the, the idea of programmability um, and anything can be programmable through an NFT and smart contracts. Um, and we will see that. I, I, I think we're going to see more adoption, like, uh, you know, music's an area that I've been spending a lot of time looking at. Um, uh, I, I, what I'm interested in is not only what happens behind the scenes, but how people start interacting, and, and you'll appreciate this because you're a data company, right, at the end of the day. And so we're going to be collecting so much data um, on how people are interacting with these NFTs, and, and that's only going to be able to create like new business models um, and, and new use cases around it. And, and so um, I, I am excited to, to see that data. And, and we've always invested a lot in the infrastructure behind you know, digital assets. And um, we invested in, in the first generation of wallets and exchanges in 2014 um, around crypto. Um, started investing in middleware and, and, and tokens um, in, in 2017 and 18. And, and so um, what, what we want to see is the infrastructure, the price discovery, a lot of stuff that you're working on um, uh, take hold. Um, and, and so then, you know, it, it's, you need to have that, those, those more efficient markets. Um, and whether it happens behind the scenes or it's consumer facing, um, we're going to have more of that infrastructure in place just like we do around, you know, Bitcoin now and, and the, tran you know, transparency that exists. We're going to see that around every single type of NFT. And, and that, that's what we're investing in. That's what I'm excited about. And, and I think that's going to help, you know, the creators, the collectors, and then all the businesses using NFTs in, in other ways. Yeah, no, very, very good point. Um, I think we... I Time-wise, we are about to run out. Is there any final words that, that anybody wants to, to, to throw in here? Um, wise words of wisdom for, for people. Use a hardware wallet, definitely. Yeah, hardware wallet for that, sure. That's one I got. Hardware wallet for sure. I think just experiment. Like, that's what we're doing. We're, we're, we're throwing stuff at the wall and seeing what happens. I think a lot of the people here were, like, just kind of constantly scrambling or putting it together and showing up and getting it all. And that's kind of the nature of the space. It's kind of like a gold rush going on. It seems hard to sleep, prioritize mental health, and experiment, and just do fun shit. Like, that's literally our business model. Do fun shit. Throw bangers. Like, we want to throw big fucking parties. Like, literally. Because that's what people want. We want to give people what they want. What do people want? That's what it they boils down to, parties. right? It's fun. We want to have fun. Exactly. Like, you know, like, exactly. like, I started New Street because I like these things better than I like stocks. I mean, literally, it all boils down to, like, these things have value, these things hold value, these things increase in value. Yeah. And when I look at my portfolio of NFTs and DeFi stuff versus my stock portfolio, I'm not going anywhere anytime soon. 
So. <laughs> Very nice. Thank, thank you guys so much. Uh, thanks to the rest of the panelists. Um, and, uh, and awesome to meet you guys all. And uh, hope to talk to you guys in various events this week. Thank you so much.